<laughs> uh, well, look, thanks very much, and it's an honour for me and my colleagues to be here, uh, Tim and Bill. Uh, a bit, wor a bit wor worried why they brought a uh, councillor from the Lockyer Valley up here without my consent, <laughs> but I believe he's claiming to be, he has relatives here. So, uh, I guess we can do that, and given that I was educated for five years in the Lockyer Valley, there's a certain amount of uh, latitude I'll give you. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's, as I said, it's an honour for me to be here today, and just to talk a little bit about the Toowoomba and the region. And I don't think, you know, maybe my colleagues and I carry a level of bias, but if you look at Toowoomba and see what's happening here, and you'll find that we're in a pretty good shape. Today, let me tell you about what has happened, and I know my colleagues were at the very first appointment I took at 7 a.m. this morning to talk about the new hospital. It will have an impact on the whole region, but can I suggest it's probably gonna have a fairly major impact on Highfields, and it's also going to necessitate that second road that we're all been bleeding about for quite a while. And it was nearly there when uh, John McVeigh was a minister and then he wasn't a minister, so it, it's fallen away, but it has to happen. We all know the effects of uh, the New England Highway and what that means at peak hour. So we need that second road. And, but if that new hospital is built at Bailey Henderson, that second road would be a major conduit to that hospital. So we went to that, but if you listen to the presentation this morning, A, there's a couple of thousand extra jobs here. B, there's over a billion dollars going into a hospital over the next five years. And C, now this is gonna disappoint a few people, but they're going to retain the current site for other purposes, medical. So that would mean there'd be gonna be a tremendous growth in what happens here. That would be a day hospital, it would be a place for um, you know, special care and all that kind of thing. So how good is that? But that's just part of it. And then <clears throat> when I got back to my office, I hopped in my vehicle and I drove down to um, a convention centre in Brisbane to, to a luncheon put on by CEDA, Commonwealth Economic Development Association, uh, about the green and gold runway. Now, if there is a legacy that I'm happy that I've left, there's a couple of them. But being in that room when Graham Quirk, the Lord Mayor of Brisbane, brought forward the concept of the Olympic Games, but it was that man's courage to bring that forward, put it on the table, who would say no to that, give it a go. Uh, you know, John Coates, the President of the uh, Olympics in Australia, and also on the World Olympic Committee, he was instrumental and it's coming our way. So what does that mean? The same man I spoke about, Graham Quirk, had this concept of what they call a city deal, which is all levels of government working to build infrastructure for a community for the next 20, 30 years. So that's what we've done. We have a $57 billion program over 30 years and the things it will include include a 45 minute region. Now, what a difference would it make to Toowoomba if you could hop on a train, whether it be in the middle of Toowoomba or wherever it might be, and 45 minutes later, you're in the CBD of Brisbane. That's vision. As far as Graham Quirk's concerned, that's amazing leadership. To put that on the table, follow that concept, and, and of course they call that city deals. It started in Manchester in England, and we've got to understand that in South East Queensland, where there are 3 million people now, there will be 2 million more by 2050. Look at that whichever way you like, but that is opportunity for Toowoomba. We know this place will grow. Now, when I talked about health before, it's the biggest employer. And the potential there is for a couple of thousand more jobs in the Toowoomba area in health, which is stable, as is education, as, as his manufacturing is growing in Toowoomba, I couldn't think of a better place. What other regional capital in Australia can suggest, or anywhere in the world in fact, can suggest that they've got Boeing coming to town? There's tremendous influence in this area getting Boeing here. Now that could be a large number of jobs, and if you haven't had a look at what they're up to, have a look wherever you want to look at loyal wingmen. And that, that is what will be manu manufactured in this area and tested. Now, that is an autonomous, multi-purpose jet. Could be a fighter jet, it could be a reconnaissance jet, 
all they do is put a different nose on it for different purposes. That's the sort of innovation. We are so lucky in this place, and this includes Stroud Homes, that we have a private sector who've got the courage to innovate and do things. We've got the courage to invest money. There's no doubt about that. Now, it doesn't matter. It, it, it stretches from an airport through to the coffee shops in the middle of your town. As far as Highfield's concerned, I think it has a tremendous future. I really do, and I'm very thankful that uh, my colleagues and I were able to buy that central part of Highfields, to plan it, and it will be developed over time and properly for the broader benefit of the greater area. <clears throat> I became very concerned when I heard uh, one evening uh, that uh, there was somebody planning to buy some land off uh, the former Mayor Clive Berghofer and build a demountable retirement village. It wasn't just my state of maturity that I might have to go into a retirement village. It was a demountable retirement village. That got me thinking. And I'm so thankful that my colleagues were prepared to back that concept because we have a plan and that it's a controlled plan for doing the right thing by the centre of Highfields. There's 14 odd thousand people in the broader area. That's the size of Warwick. So why wouldn't Highfields have a town centre? Why wouldn't it have those facilities? Why wouldn't it have things like a day hospital? Why wouldn't it have a things like an office block? Because it has the population. So ladies and gentlemen, to Stroud and to all the team, thank you very much for inviting me along. I'll, I'll cut it off as soon as I can. I carry on a bit. If I start repeating myself, don't tell Jeff McDonald. Just, just put your hand up. Okay? Uh, but uh, Jeff gives me a hard time. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you know, I enjoyed seeing this community develop. This whole estate here has been something special. If you're in my position and Tim's position and Bill's position, you would have heard we haven't got this, we haven't got that, this is wrong, that's wrong with land development. There's been a big change lately, but people with the courage of Steve to go ahead and to build this development here and to get it happening, despite difficulties, despite it's not just 100% normal, it's about 95% normal, because of you know the sewerage and those kind of things, but having the courage to go ahead and do it. And that's what we've got in Toowoomba, and that's the thing we ought to be very proud of. But no, congratulations on what you're doing, and uh, keep it up, because Toowoomba will grow, it will grow steadily. There's those who complain that we don't have the, the, the peaks that they have at the Gold Coast, but we have it steady, and that's more important than having peaks. So thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Thank you.